Exception handling allows us to deal with unexpected situations that may occur in a program. When a function encounters a situation that it cannot recover from, it can generate an exception to signal to the caller that the function has failed. This is done using the throw keyword followed by whatever it is we want to signal. When this statement is reached, the method will stop executing and the exception will propagate up to the caller where we can catch it using a try-catch statement. This statement consists of a try block containing code that may cause exceptions and one or more catch clauses to handle them. In this case, we throw an integer and so we need to include one catch block that handles this type of exception. The thrown expression will get passed as an argument to the exception handler where it can be used to determine what has gone wrong with the function. Note that when the exception has been handled, the execution will then continue running after the try catch blocks and not after the throw statement. An exception handler can catch a thrown expression either by value, reference or pointer. However, catching by value should be avoided since this causes an extra copy to be made. Catching by reference is generally preferable. If the code in the try block can throw more types of exceptions, we would need to add more catch clauses to handle them. Keep in mind that only the handler that matches the thrown expression will be executed. To catch all types of exceptions, we can use an ellipsis as the parameter of catch. This default handler must be placed as the last catch statement, since no handler placed after it would ever be executed. If an exception handler is not able to recover from an exception, we can then re-throw it using only the throw keyword to pass it along to an external try-catch block. Be careful though, because if an exception is never caught, the program will terminate with a runtime error. Functions are by default allowed to throw exceptions of any type. To specify the exception types that a function may throw, we can append the throw keyword to the function declaration followed by a comma separated list of the allowed types, if any, enclosed in parentheses. This exception specification is very different from the one used in Java and overall there is very little reason to specify exceptions in C++. The compiler will not enforce the specified exceptions in any way and it will not be able to make any optimizations because of them. As previously mentioned, any data type can be thrown in C++, but the standard library does provide a base class called exception, which is specifically designed to declare objects to be thrown. It is defined in the exception header file and is located under the std namespace. As seen here, it can be constructed with a char sequence that becomes the exception's description. When we catch this exception, we can use the object's function what to retrieve the description.